Welcome to the debut of the World Poker Tour. This is really exciting, Vince, to get to see these players' cards because the viewers are going to get a nice insight on what these players are actually thinking. Who's going to be the first winner of the final table on the World Poker Tour? Welcome to Los Angeles and the legendary Bicycle Casino. Tonight it's the Foxwoods World Poker Finals. Welcome to Las Vegas and the beautiful Bellagio. In Atlantic City, a thousand players have become six and tonight six will become one. I'm Kimberly Lansing and this is the World Poker Tour. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He needs the extreme miracle. Oh! oh! Wow! Unbelievable! For nine seasons, Foxwoods has played host to some of the biggest poker names in the world. Four days ago, all the great past champs showed up ready to take down another WPT title, but a new generation of pros were ready and waiting to kick the old guard out the door. There's a part of me that's impressed by John Carradine simply because he has the balls to try and bluff Phil Ivey. The river bluff is a clear mistake, and here's why. First is the sizing. When John bets 500K into a pot of over 1.4 million, he's laying Ivy an excellent price at nearly four to one to make a call with anything in his range that has showdown value. Second, I think John is failing to think about Ivy's hand range properly here. And John's best play would have been to check and pray that Ivy checks behind. Instead he bets, and to exacerbate John's problems, he completely fails to keep his poker face together. I mean, come on, I've seen girls say, I don't usually do this kind of thing with more believability in their face than this guy in the middle of the bluff. I'm Melanie, one of the Royal Flush Girls, and you're watching the World Poker Tour. We love Las Vegas! If a guy doesn't know when to fold, that's like a turn off for me. If a guy is bluffing in the game, that's okay. Just can't be too often. If he's bluffing on me, cut you off. <laughs> Welcome back to Bellagio and, and the, the World Poker Tour. Hopefully the fans will love it just as much as we do. So show us the money. And out come the Royal Flush Girls, brought to you by prestigious models. I tell the truth, Vinny. What's prettier, the Royal Flush Girls or all the cash? <laughs> That's pretty cool. We can both get you into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Let's get ready to kick off season nine. Let's shuffle up and deal. Day two saw 67 new players in the field, bringing the count up to 310 total players. Alex Kravchenko tangled with WPT champ Sean Buchanan. On an eight high flop, Alex didn't mess around and put Sean all in. Sean's top pair was dominated and he was sent packing. When the dust cleared, 112 players were left at Bellagio with only three days between them and a WPT title. For how all that will factor in, we turn, as always, to Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Gentlemen, how will the blinds affect this final table at the start? Well, Kimberly, because the blinds and Annie's are relatively high in relation to the average chip stack, that means we could see fireworks early on at this final table. Because if any players are planning on sitting back and waiting for premium hands, they're going to find themselves blinded down to a short stack pretty quickly. And Vince, talk to us a little about Andy Frankenberger, and can you put in context what he's trying to accomplish tonight? Well, it's amazing, Kimberly. Who is this guy, Andy Frankenberger? He is going after his second title on the World Poker Tour in the same season. Let me put it this way, Kimberly. The Burger Man is going to take home a lot more cash to go with his fries and shake. <laughs> Three days away from a WPT title. Think positive. I'm ready to play some poker. This is Phil Hillmute that he's entering the WPT here in Bellagio, and I will try to get something out of him. This is so exciting. Right, I hope I don't fall over. I love coming in at the last possible minute, and it's a break-even play. Coming this late, you're at a big disadvantage in that you don't have very many chips. Um, but you're at an advantage, there's only 100 players left, and, and it's just kind of nice. And, uh, you know, I'm due. Maybe I'll... This could be it. I love it. I can play nine hours today, nine hours tomorrow. I'm at the final table. Knock it off after about five. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Focused. Ready. All in. Oh. That didn't last long. I forgot to win a hand today. So, I mean, not very many tournaments where I don't win a single hand. 
people that I'm friends with are all like the best poker players. Who would you ever. like to see at the final table? The Let's oldest five college. people that are still left. The and, oldest five and people. Me. I'm gonna say how everyone sucks at poker besides me and like 10 people. <laughs> Last season, Jeremy Brown held a 19 to 1 chip lead in heads up play here at the Borgata Poker Open and yet still managed to find a way to come up short. We caught up with Jeremy for five questions, including one that's on everybody's mind. <laughs> How drunk were you? I was feeling pretty good. A round for everybody, including me too, please. Is poker tougher now than when you first started playing? Oh, definitely poker's tougher now. My aggression didn't really work because there was no thought behind it. And I suffered because of that. You went on the record saying oh, that shit. women suck at oh. poker. Yeah, I did that. Well, the graphics you see are in four colors, what we call a four-color deck in poker. Spades are black, hearts are red, diamonds are blue, and clubs are green. Oh, Mike, what's the difference? A bad beat is a bad beat in any color. <laughs> Well, most online players love to use four-color decks because it helps them identify flushes where you don't misread your hand. And look at this. He's making a solid call. Wow, what a call by Phil Ivey right there. Folks, that was virtually his term in life. Oh, Jack 10-4 right on the fly. Unbelievable. Well, Fear needs two runners to win this pot. And look at this card on the turn. The eight of hearts comes off. White is acting like it's over. <laughs> well, he sure is. Oh, Fear Morph has a shot now. And outdraw Dwight Pilgrim. And hits one up. Ooh, the king yeah. comes off. Oh, Fear has done it. And folks, if there's a lesson to be learned here, don't celebrate until they pass the pot your way. <laughs> You just can't torture the poker gods like that. No, you don't. And be celebrating before you win the pot. That's like tickling the foot of the poker god. He doesn't like to be tickled. Damn!